All right, good Wednesday morning to everyone. Uh, you should see the first briefing slide. Um, this also should be in your email inbox. Um, we sent that out just about an hour ago. Um, main change uh, with Dorian, not a lot of change to the overall impacts, but the arrival of tropical storm force winds has slowed just a little bit. Now most likely Thursday night. Uh, previously we were talking about arriving sometime during the day Thursday. Stressing though, just because it's a little slower doesn't change our impacts at all. So don't think because it's not arriving at the same time that those impacts have changed. And Sarah's going to talk about this a little bit. Uh, rainfall totals pretty steady, but they've increased just a little bit for inland areas. Um, a few housekeeping items we planned, unless there's major updates with 11 a.m. advisory, to do another update by 6.30. And that is when our next webinar will be as well. All right, uh, as far as the impacts go, again, not a lot of changes with these. Um, as far as storm surge goes, initially with that push of water from Dorian, we're talking ocean side areas, um, but that threat will transition to the south side areas um, for the Outer Banks and also our inland rivers, so please keep that in mind. Um, prolonged heavy rain concerns with uh, flash flooding, especially because of the rainfall rate that we're um, anticipating. As far as wind goes, pretty much everywhere across our area, the highest threat is still coastal areas but even sustained tropical storm force winds are possible over all of eastern North Carolina. So uh, keep that in mind. And again, on the far right, you'll notice that the wording has changed uh, slightly. Uh, some of this said Wednesday or tonight, and now most of that says Thursday into Friday. With it slowing down, it, it does look like it will linger through most of the day Friday itself. So please keep that in mind as well. The time frame is just adjusted forward uh, just a little bit. Here's the latest forecast track as of this morning. Uh, we continue to stress not a lot of change with the track itself. We continue to get questions about this, however. What about if it um, you know, makes landfall? What if it goes out to sea a little bit more? In reality, the impacts on, on us won't change all that much. Yes, with the landfall, you'll see some increased surge and wind issues uh, right near the center and just to the east, uh, but that'll be in a very small area that your impact will change. Overall, for eastern North Carolina, we're close enough now that we are going to see impacts no matter what in terms of the storm track. So we really want to shift the focus away from uh, the track. And the other thing I want to point out, um, again, the cone just shows the most probable path for just the center of the storm. It does not show where the impacts will be or will they, where they won't be. Uh, case in point right now, this is Florida. Again, the, the track of the center shows it remaining off the coast, but this orange shading you see here is the tropical storm force wind field that is hitting the east coast of Florida. So again, keep that in mind. Impacts will extend well away from the center. I know we've been preaching it um, throughout our awareness this summer and also this briefing, but please get that message out into the community. Uh, we don't want people focusing on the track as much as they do already. Our overall threat levels have not changed. Highest for surge and rainfall, uh, flooding from that. Uh, also high for wind, especially along the coast. We'll show that in a second. And lower threat for uh, tornadoes. So overall, the threat level has remained the same. Our confidence, though, however, uh, does continue to increase. Storm surge watch uh, was expanded late last night, and it's all encompassing our area in terms of those uh, areas, either Oceanside, Inland Rivers, or the uh, Sounds. Um, the watch, again, means potential for life-threatening storm surge. Uh, we mentioned it's a fluid forecast, so we anticipate that these will be um, upgraded some point today, so please check back for that. And the thing we want to mention that sometimes we forget to do, with our storm surge, when you see those values, we are going to have large waves on top of that, and that will enhance the storm surge in some areas. So when we're messaging a couple feet of storm surge, um, it could be potentially higher in some locations uh, in exposed wind areas because of those breaking waves on top. So our threat for uh, storm surge is highest initially the Crystal Coast, Southern Onslow County, uh, Bogue Banks, places like that, Bogue Sound. But for you folks up north, don't think you're moderate and you don't have to be as concerned. Uh, this is a fluid forecast and will likely change with time. So again, it's just initially the concern is down here, but it will spread northward um, with time. And uh, with that type of surge, expecting, um, you know, beach erosion, ocean overwash, uh, things of that nature. This is our storm surge map. Um, I 
uh, know this is very coarse zoomed out, so highlighting the PDF link or the hyperlink at the bottom, click on that, zoom into your area to get a little bit more resolution. The messaging remains the same, uh, Surf City to Cape Lookout, four to seven feet, north of Cape Lookout up to Duck, and including the uh, rivers and sounds, three to feet above ground. For that, what does that mean? Uh, any low-lying areas that are near water, um, those sounds and also the ocean side, normally dry areas will have, um, you know, potentially three to five feet or in some cases four to seven feet of water. This is a reasonable worst-case scenario. Not everyone on this map will see those values. This is your credible worst-case scenario um, that that potentially could happen. Inundation could be, uh, begin as early as Thursday. Uh, these values, again, um, especially for low spots and stuff, um, that will impact, you know, potentially structures and vehicles. So uh, moving to higher ground if you've had issues in the past is a, is a suggestion. Um, so at that point, I'm going to turn it over now. We, we focused on surge as one of the biggest threats. The other big threat is heavy rain. Sarah Jameson has joined us again. Uh, I know we, we see her. We love to see her every year, but usually when it means we see her, uh, we have something like this to deal with. So Sarah's going to cover the flooding aspect, and then she'll turn it back over to me, and I'll wrap up with wind. And then those folks across northeast North Carolina just hang tight. Uh, we've got the uh, folks up at Wakefield that will uh, zoom into your area and talk a little bit more for you. So here's Sarah for now. Okay, thank you, Eric. All right, so overall, the big picture for the flooding threat, um, as Eric stated earlier, there has been a slight decrease in the storm speed as it comes through the area. So the result of that is that we are going to see slightly heavier rainfall amounts. Um, and we have shifted some of that heavier rainfall inland, and I'll talk about that here on the next slide. But overall, the initial threat is going to be flash flooding. We think that there's going to be a risk across the entire portion of eastern North Carolina. And it's going to really come down to where those rain bands set up, which is too detailed for us to identify this far out. But let's just say the entire region uh, could be vulnerable to seeing uh, swaths of much heavier rainfall. As far as the river flood threat, at this point, we're looking at a minor to moderate river flood threat. Uh, most of the rainfall is going to be falling over or downstream of most of our major rivers and not upstream, unlike what we saw with Hurricane Florence. In addition to that, we're starting off this event on the drier side. Um, the rivers and streams are pretty low, so we have a lot of stores. So those things are in our favor. But keep in mind, um, we are forecasting rainfall amounts here of 6 to 8 inches and a broader area of 8 to 10. This is fairly broad brush based on the current track and the duration of the rainfall. We are emphasizing there is a chance that we could see up to 15 inches of rain where those rain bands set up. So 15 inches of rain will cause some significant problems, especially on your tributaries to your main stem rivers, which tend to be more flashy. Can you mention that a little bit? You talked to me offline, um, main stem river versus the smaller ones. So what ones were, would you be more concerned with for I, the coast? At this point, I think when we focus in on the Tar and the Newth rivers, which tend to be our larger uh, main stem rivers, those can handle a lot of flow and without much contribution from upstream, we believe that minor and at worst case at this time, moderate uh, flood conditions uh, are possible. For the tributary streams and creeks that flow in to some of these main stem rivers, they could be more susceptible to moderate and possibly major flooding. But as we get closer, we're now 24 hours before the heavier rain starts to move into the area. We're going to really get more detailed information on that track. We can start really doing some deep analysis on what some of these smaller rivers and creeks are going to be doing and we'll be able to provide more detail in upcoming briefings. But for now, I think the big picture takeaway is flash flood risks starting as early as Thursday, increasing Thursday night to Friday, and then we're going to see the resultant river flooding continuing into the weekend. But at this point, again, the main stem rivers, we're looking at minor to possibly moderate and slight chance for some major flooding on some of the tributaries. All right, Sarah, thank you very much. We really appreciate her joining us to uh, give her um, uh, her analysis of that, especially uh, with her experience with the past storms that we've had. We're going to wrap things up here shortly and turn it over to Wakefield. Um, wind threat, still expecting that to be highest along the coast. Uh, pretty much anywhere in eastern North Carolina um, could see sustained winds, tropical storm force, uh, so 39 miles per hour up to 50, 55. 
Uh, the highest potential for that would be this red shading. And as far as hurricane force winds, um, mainly um, gusts is what we're looking at now, 74 or greater, especially in the red area. So southern Onslow, the Crystal Coast, and uh, the Outer Banks. So best potential for hurricane force winds would be in the areas in red and pretty much everyone for sustained tropical storm force winds. This was the change we mentioned at the beginning. The most likely time is now uh, Thursday night. Again, does not change our impacts. It just changes the fact uh, that folks have a little bit more time to prepare. You'll notice the probabilities have increased. They're almost above 90 now uh, near the southern part of the Outer Banks, but even inland, uh, 50 to 60 percent, so becoming likely uh, even inland itself. Tornado threat, uh, we mentioned that this could expand with time and that it has done so. This is still our least risk of anything, but anytime you have a landfalling or near landfalling tropical cyclone, you can get some isolated tornadoes producing some damage. Um, so that threat is pretty much everywhere and that would be Thursday through the day Friday itself. Uh, max maximum wave heights, we only show you this to emphasize the beach erosion that we anticipate. Uh, in addition, when you have waves like this, um, that will add to some surge issues um, with the waves piling up on top. And uh, we, we mentioned the surge before. Again, it's initially the, the south coast, uh, Crystal Coast, and Oceanside Outer Banks. But as that storm departs, the backside, very, very strong winds, uh, all that water that has pushed up the Pamlico and the Noose um, River will slosh back uh, toward places like Hatteras Village and, and down East Carteret County. So uh, keep that in mind. So before we turn it over, confidence is high. We're going to have this event. Again, still moderate on exact impacts. We, um, we just, you know, by this afternoon, I think we're going to be able to change some of this with headlines and, and things of that nature. Um, so some housekeeping before we turn it over to Wakefield. Our next email briefing will be by 6.30 today. That is when our webinar will occur as well. Um, we may do a mid midday update if there's any major changes with the 11 a.m. advisory. As always, tell folks to go to our website and social media. We're posting all that information there as well.